All right, so here we're going to take a peek at our pressure compensated load sensing hydraulic system. Uh, we have a schematic diagram already up on the screen here. It's showing us the hydraulic pump. It's showing us the servo and two valves. Those valves are your pressure compensator spool and your load sense spool. Before we get into the function of everything here, we're going to show uh, the hydraulic uh, system that it hooks up to so we can understand why the different parts are where they are and what they do. So we're going to start off with this diagram here. If you want to follow along and draw out the hydraulic valve and uh, just follow along with what I'm doing here. I think that'll be helpful. If I was you, I'd probably want to draw out at least the valve. Okay. So our valve, we're just gonna keep it simple. And we're gonna have a three position valve. And that three position valve is gonna have basic closed center configuration for the ports. Because this valve is being used with a load sensing hydraulic pump, we have to add in an additional port here. And that's going to be your load sense port. And one thing you'll notice is that when the valve is in neutral, that port is open to tank. That's usually the case. I'm not going to say it's always the case. It's usually the case. Usually your load sense is drained uh, in each valve when the valve is in neutral. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes we rely on an internal bleed down in the pump itself. And we'll talk about that in a second. So we're gonna start off by hooking this up to a load. Okay, and for the purposes of this diagram, the load is just a simple cylinder. And that cylinder is hooked up to our two work ports. We'll go ahead and fill out the extending and retracting envelopes on this valve here. And then we'll start hooking it up to the pump itself. Okay. So for retracting, My screen is getting a little squirrely on me. My apologies. Uh, what is going on here? Okay, there we go. So what we're gonna do is add in a few things. And what we've got here is we've got the retracting position where we send oil to the top of the cylinder uh, from the pump and we dump the other one back to tank uh, from the bottom of the cylinder. Up on the top here, we've got the opposite thing happening to extend. Now, do you notice how I drew what looks like a little restrictor or an orifice there in the valve? And the reason I did that is because it's representing what actually does happen when the oil flows through the valve. Your valve spool acts to a certain degree uh, like a restriction in the system. And that restriction in the system is uh, going to it's gonna cause a pressure drop as the oil flows through the valve. So that means if I looked at the oil that was coming into the valve from the pump output versus the oil that was going to the cylinder on the other side, there is gonna be a little bit of a pressure drop because of the restriction of the valve. Now, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit here and let's take a look at the hookups. So we come off of the pump and this is our pump outlet and we're going to hook that up to the p port on the hydraulic valve we're going to take our load sense and we're going to hook that up to the load sense on the pump on the pump compensator and then obviously our tank port just dumps back the tank So at this point here, we do have a fully functional 
uh, hydraulic system. It's only got a single circuit hooked up to, but for now, just to keep things simple, that's all we're going to, to look at. We've got some gauges that we can uh, hook up to a system like this. Load sense. And then system or pump output pressure. Okay. So our system pressure, our pump output pressure, uh, that's looking at what comes right out of the hydraulic pump. Your load sense, your load sense is actually looking at the work port pressure on the hydraulic circuit that we're using. Now we've got a few different things going on on the pump here. This right here is our servo. This is going to be our pressure compensator spool and spring. And this is going to be our load sense spool and spring. So let's take a look at what happens here uh, when we uh, first fire up the system. When we first fire up the system, the pump is going to be fully stroked. The servo has got a spring in it and the spring is going to force the pump swash plate to max angle, pump is fully stroked, machine fires up and flow starts to come out of the pump. Because we have a closed center system, the flow cannot continue onto the valves. All right, the pressure is going to start building, but there's really nowhere for that flow to go because once it hits the valve centers, that's it, it's blocked. So that flow coming out of the pump can also follow this path here to these two spools. And you'll notice it acts as pilot pressure on those spools, trying to shove them up against their respective springs. If we wanted to assign some uh, basic values here for the pressures in this system, we could say that our pressure compensator spring has got a 3000 pound value and our load sense spool spring has got, uh, you know, let's say a 400 pound value. So what that means is the pump pressure is going to act on those spools and if the pump pressure is sufficient to overcome the spring force these spools are going to shift up and when they shift up what ends up happening is the pump output goes through the spool passage because we shift it up and then it goes along and it fills up the servo the way these hydraulic pumps work is if we fill the servo we destroke if we drain the servo we upstroke so looking at it right now, the pump is fully upstroked in a resting position. As soon as the pump output pressure gets up to 400 PSI, the load sense spool shifts up and the pump destrokes. That's how we get low standby. Okay. So we're gonna make a, a little bit of a, a chart here and follow along and see what happens. So on this chart, we're gonna look at neutral working pressure and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my colors here just to make this clear neutral working install or maximum system pressure all right and on this table here we're also going to uh, add in uh, what our load sense pressure is and what our system pressure is. So when I'm in neutral, if I take a look at my load sense gauge and I take a look at my pump output gauge, it should be pretty clear to see that if the valves are in neutral and the load sense is hooked up to tank, in most cases, your load sense would be zero. If I take a look at what my pump output is, I know the pump had to get to about 400 PSI to overcome the spring force on the load sense spool, shoved it up, destroked itself, which means that my system uh, or my pump output 
going to be 400. And that 400 PSI, that's low standby pressure. And low standby pressure is established by the tension on the load sense spool spring. Working pressure. If I take a look at this guy right here, okay, and that's going to be from the pressure in the cylinder. Okay, just because of the weight on the cylinder, that establishes some pressure in the cylinder. And let's say the working pressure uh, was 1,000 PSI. So my working pressure, 1,000 PSI, um, that's just because of the amount of load on the cylinder. As soon as I open the valve, we end up back feeding the pressure through the load sense. So if I open up the valve and I want to lift the cylinder, uh, the pressure signal from the work port side back feeds down the load sense. And that means I'm going to end up with 1,000 PSI in the load sense line. And if I got 1,000 PSI in the load sense line, that means that it's going to act like pilot pressure to help shove the spool back down. So if I got 400 pounds of spring force and 1,000 PSI of oil pressure helping to force that spring down, that means the only way the pump's going to be able to move that spool back up in D-stroke is if it gets to 1,400 PSI of pump output pressure. So if I have 1,000 here, that means I have 1,400 here. A term that you're going to see in uh, certain service manuals is differential pressure. Or it might even be written out like this, where it says 400 PSI, or maybe it's like, you know, 400 PSI differential. That little triangle there, that means differential. And differential pressure is just simply the difference between two values. When you're given a spec as differential pressure instead of low standby, chances are um, the manufacturer wants that uh, there we go. Uh, they want that adjusted uh, as a dynamic adjustment. And a dynamic adjustment means that you have the machine running. You have a load on the hydraulic system. You've got some pressure, a known pressure in the load sense line. And you adjust the tension on the load sense uh, spool spring so that you get the difference in pressure that you're looking for. In most cases, low standby and differential pressure are the same thing. In certain cases, it's not. Now let's take a look at stall pressure here. On a system like this, um, if I've got my valve open and I'm extending the cylinder, sooner or later, the cylinder is gonna hit the end of its travel. And the pressure in the cylinder is gonna to start to rise because the pump is trying to push flow into the cylinder, but that flow has nowhere to go, so the pressure goes up. And when that happens, the pressure in the cylinder is gonna start going up And that pressure in the cylinder is gonna go up and feed pressure back down the load sense. And now my load sense is helping to push the load sense spool down with the spring. So that means my load sense spool's actually got 3,400 pounds of force pushing it down, trying to keep the servo drained and trying to keep the pump on. Well, we can't do that because this thing would just spiral right out of control and blow something up. That's why we have the PC spool here. And the PC spool, as soon as the pump output pressure hits 3000 PSI, it's going to shift up and it's going to take over control of the pump and de-stroke at maximum system pressure, which happens to be 3000 PSI. So what happens on most systems is when you stall the system, the load sense, and the pump output end up being the same pressure. Now, so, so far this is pretty straightforward. This reflects exactly what you've talked about um, in, in previous hydraulic lessons uh, referring to this. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna discuss another scenario where things work a little bit differently. Okay, and in this scenario here, it's not actually the PC spool that controls maximum system pressure anymore. On some systems, what we'll do is we'll add in 
a relief valve to the load sense circuit. Okay. Now that relief valve right there is called a load sense signal relief or a signal limiter. If I put a relief valve in the load sense line and limit the maximum pressure the load sense could ever get to, then that could be the thing that controls maximum system pressure. Okay. So let's imagine that I stalled this cylinder and I was sending, you know, 3000 PSI of system pressure to it, but that 3000 PSI of system pressure wasn't actually because of the PC spool. Okay, let's get creative here. Let's say that our PC spool is set to 3,500 PSI, but we still had a maximum system pressure of 3,000. How do we achieve that? My relief valve opens at 2,600 PSI. And that means that if the highest pressure that we ever let happen in the load sense line is 2,600 PSI, that's the highest it can ever get. That means that my load sense spool, the most force it could ever have on it is 2,600 plus 400, which equals 3,000. And if I was looking at my gauges, it wouldn't be 3,000 and 3,000. It would be 2,600 on the load sense and 3,000 on the pump output. All right, so this is something that we're seeing on certain hydraulic systems and there's a very good reason why we do that um, in the next lesson uh, we'll be talking about post spool flow compensation uh, which is a hydraulic system that is used on certain pieces of equipment where we want to make sure that everything on the machine can function regardless of pressure and flow requirements okay it's a flow divider system that's really what it is and that flow divider system it works well uh, but in order for it to work, we have to have a signal relief in there. In a lot of ag applications, you don't see this. In some ag and uh, some heavy, you do see this. So that is one of those uh, other interesting details we're gonna talk about. So now that we've gone through and discussed how the system works and what kind of pressures we could expect in the load sense and the pump output pressure, now we got a couple of gauges on there. This is how it works, but if it's not working, then let's talk about kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, in terms of how we can get the pump back to a functional state. If you've got a hydraulic system and it's a load sensing hydraulic system and things aren't working right, one of the first things that you can do is figure out if the reason why it's not working is because there's a problem in the load sense or a problem in the pump. And to do that, we just simply take the load sense out of the equation. Okay. So when you're making adjustments or you're trying to do some basic diagnosis on this, if you've got some functions that work and some functions that don't, what you can do is start deadheading functions and see what works. If you've got half of your functions working and half of your functions not, it's likely a shuttle valve issue in your uh, hydraulic system. If you are uh, deadheading your functions and you find out that, yes, I do have some that work, what you can do is you can hold a working function deadheaded and the other ones that didn't work, they're going to work now. And the reason for that is when you deadhead a working function, it sends load sense pressure to the load sense spool and upstrokes the pump. We can do the same thing manually by turning in the load sense by turning in the load sense screw. I turn in the load sense screw, uh, screw and what I've done now is I've effectively turned this into a, a pressure compensated system, just pressure compensated close center system, a high standby system. Uh, what I can do now is adjust the pressure compensator spool. When I adjust the pressure compensator spool, I'm looking at my pump output pressure and I'm setting it until I get to whatever my maximum system pressure value is. Assuming we're talking a, a typical system here, uh, you're gonna have basically two numbers in front of you. One number is your differential or low standby pressure and the other one is your stall pressure. 
So adjust your PC spool to whatever your stall pressure is. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna back off the load sense until you get to low standby. Okay, once you're at low standby, the, the machine has got the pump and both of its spools adjusted to the point where it should be functional. And now you can start testing and seeing if your hydraulics work again. If you happen to have a load sense signal relief, this would be the point where you'd want to adjust that. Okay, your load sense signal relief is gonna be set to a value lower than the stall pressure established by the PC spool, just to make sure it's the one that's doing the job. So if you have a signal relief, then you're gonna adjust it here. And to do that, you stall a function. And adjust the signal relief to establish your uh, desired maximum system pressure, your stall pressure. Okay. Another thing that we can do uh, that I did reference uh, earlier is we can do a dynamic adjustment of the uh, load sense system as well. And the reason you might do a dynamic adjustment is if you were told that you were supposed to set a differential pressure on the machine, not a low standby. So if your specs tell you that they want 400 PSI differential, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come back and we're actually gonna fine tune the uh, load sense, uh, you know, low standby pressure. We're gonna fine tune it and do it more accurately. It's the same spring, the same spool. It's just a more accurate way of adjusting it. So to do this, I'm going to set up a known load in the hydraulic system, okay? So I'm gonna use a flow meter. I'm gonna set that flow meter to, I'm just gonna pull a number out of the air here and say uh, 2000 PSI. And usually that's a pretty good number to use if you're trying to do a dynamic. So get a flow meter on a set of remotes, uh, set up 2000 PSI of load with your flow meter. If I got 2000 PSI load with the flow meter, that means I got 2000 PSI of pressure in the load sense line. Now I take a look at my load sense gauge and I take a look at my pump output gauge and I wanna see a 400 PSI difference between them. To get that 400 PSI difference, I'm gonna adjust the load sense spool spring. Okay, until my pump output to my system pressure is at 2400 PSI. 2000 PSI is gonna be showing on the load sense gauge, 2400 PSI is gonna be showing on the pump output gauge. There's my 400 PSI differential. And I was adjusting the same spring is what I adjusted when I set the low standby. This is a more accurate way of doing it. So there we go. That's a complete overview of your pressure compensated load sensing system. Uh, we talked about uh, the way the valve works. We talked about the way the oil flows through the system, various different pressures you could expect to see on a load sense and a pump output pressure gauge, adjustment procedure, um, including load sense signal relief, and also uh, some information on doing differential pressure adjustments.